Look at every square inch of your property and see what you can do to maximize space. So we're moving our chickens over to this area that used to have a shed. And the glass on the shed slash greenhouse was broken in some parts. So we cleared out this dirt, sifted it so that there wouldn't be glass here. And uh, my husband and my son kind of evened out this area here. They added some pavers right here because this area was just soil and we don't want something digging from underneath. And it's got kind of a frame for that shed that was there. So next is the move for the chicken the chicken coop move over to this area so here we are the chickens are about five inches lower their their chicken run and coop because it used to have a metal frame and the metal frame was removed in preparation for their move and they're going to move to the corner where we cleaned up and so the frame has been removed and then we'll have to stick them all into their coop and then we'll move um, piece by piece the walls and then we'll finally move the coop and so they were cooped up last night and now they're out exploring so we'll see what happens after the move. I just cleaned their coop, so the bedding is quite nice. I had removed the dried out pineapple mint because it had gotten poop all over it. And then I had flipped it over and I pooped on the other side of that pineapple mint as it dried. Then I harvested um, the second round of pineapple mint and threw it in there. And now they they have fresh bedding because um, it had gotten soiled enough and I did the same thing I took the pineapple mint and the bedding and I threw it in a, a bag that used to hold soil and um, I just water it in and I let it sit for six months and then hopefully it'll break down to pretty good compost and so some of them are enjoying the time in here Hi friends, so this is where the chicken coop and chicken run will be and here is the steel frame I was talking about that was removed from the old coop and run and it's been reassembled and we put some bricks underneath so things can't dig under to help with the foundation of it, the framing of it, and we're going to place the chicken run and coop over here and then we're going to put sand all down here to fill it up. Hi friends, so this is what we've done so far. Hi friends, so this is what we've done so far. We rebuilt the coop here and we have yet to make, we've made the run and secured it completely all around so nothing can get in. Um, we just have to complete the coop. So we'll put a couple nesting bars and we'll put the um, sand at the bottom and a staircase up there so they can get to their nesting and um, then we will add the egg box in there somehow and then over here we have 
some pavers to kind of secure it, even though there's that aluminum frame that we have back there, down there. We're just trying to be extra, extra, you know, cautious. So we're just going to continue to make this area really nice for them. So here's the recent update. My husband made the, the ladder for the chickens. My husband and my son and there's the ladder. It's more robust than the last but they'll have a little shade under there. And a huge coop that has three roosts, three, um, three layers. Um, so they have a lot of room, fresh bedding. Um, and so right now they're going to put a roof up there over the coop so it'll be waterproof. Some corrugated tin. And then we're gonna put some, some a roof over this um, hardware cloth as well, because when it rains, we don't want mud down here. And I'm thinking of out here. I'm thinking of putting a roof that extends out, so that I have a porch out here. And what I can do, so I can have a porch out here, and I can place there galvanized steel container that has their food and other things here and um, that way I'll have um, it's gonna kind of be like a storage tool storage shed as well as placing their food and their DE and other things so it's gonna be great so this is my concrete bed and I, I grew some carrots in there and before I knew it, it already had gone to seed and it didn't have too many um, carrots. But from the seeds, I was able to get a, a ton of seeds. So this time around, I'm a little more familiar with growing carrots. So I'm going to clear out this bed. Um, the other thing that was in here were tons and tons of fennel. And I got tons of seeds from that. I've cut off all the tops. And now I'm going to pull the stalks out. Then I'm going to weed this area. And then I'm going to um, amend, it, amend it with some soil. And then grow some new stuff in here. Please excuse the yippee dogs. Uh, my husband's doing some construction of the coop and the dogs, they're not used to seeing people back there. And so they're just barking at people, barking at them as they're doing construction. So this bed here, I am going to clean up this thing that's uh, kind of like a Tradescantia plant. It's very invasive. I don't know how it drops seeds and it also has runners and so it just keeps going and going and once and it just self seeds and it just takes over. But the good thing about it is it's easy to pluck out but the, the bad thing is you're always constantly pulling the weeds out. Anyway, so I'm going to clean along this path and try to clean up my garden. So this patch is where I had my coneflowers and poppies growing and since it was out of season I pulled up all the tall coneflowers and I put it at the periphery of this bed and then recently when I was harvesting, when I was plucking out my old sunflowers and my fennel, I just threw the brambles here um, to kind of make a circle for a bed. However, if, because right now it, and you're not allowed to have um, fire in SoCal because we have four fires going on, um, we're just going to wait. I was just going to let this deteriorate. I was going to let this stuff deteriorate in place, however, because it has all of winter to do so however it's making it look really messy so 
hopefully in the winter we might be able to set this on fire because we do like wood ash and you know that stuff's pretty good and it, and then all this bulk will go down and you won't have so much bulk everywhere another thing that's happening is um, under my avocado tree it had dropped avocado leaves from the previous year and there was so much of it under the avocado trees I have two of them so I just um, and they are such thick leaves it's they don't det deteriorate very quickly or decay so um, I just scoop them up into these bags and then as I get the chicken bedding I'll just throw it on top and the used chicken bedding and then it'll just break down and maybe I'll add some soil or something with the earthworms and bacteria, soil bacteria, and that'll help it break down faster. And then I'll be able to use it in the spring. Earlier in the season, I had uh, pulled down some apricot branches because they were leaning over the fence and going onto the neighbor's property. So we chopped that down and, and uh, we I just put it up right, right here to kind of like keep the squirrels from coming into the yard, but they come in regardless. So um, same thing when we put, when we burn the, the scraps, we'll just stick this in as well. We'll cut it down to little pieces and, and get some wood ash out of this. Same goes with this stuff here. So these were all the branches that were behind our building um, that we had to pull away to put the coop in. So um, I just tugged it all over here and we'll just take this and burn it as well or, or something. But. We have a, a Hugo culture project that we're going to do back here. And so we're just going to take all this wood material and stick it in the our Hugo culture rather than burning it and I think it's safer. Yeah, I think not having a fire would be preferable. So we'll just incorporate the, all this uh, debris as Hugo culture. We had a massive heat wave for about a week and a half. Um, temperatures of 103 up, upwards to like 108 and some places it was 112. And um, my poor avocado tree, it was so green and lush. If you look at my previous video and then I'll show you, it, it really scorched the leaves. So there was absolutely no brown in my leaves. It was really beautiful, dense, green, lush, like forever going on for days and days. And then the scorcher came and we have drip irrigation under, under our trees. So it's doing fantastic. But because of the hot days and who says global warming doesn't exist. These are record temperatures that we rarely used to see, and check this out. It really took a lot of heat, a lot of damage, a lot of damage. However, the tree is pretty healthy besides the scorched leaves. I've got some fruit right there. So... And over there it's nice and lush and those are um, right there I had all the leaves I scooped it out from under here it looks like a messy jungle but actually it kept the soil moist and it kept it cool the so the plants were able to do pretty well <laughs> 